I am Mr. Ninath Kulkarni, working as an assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering at Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. In today's session, I will be taking you through the forward kinematics and I will be demonstrating you how the forward kinematics is done with the help of RoboAnalyzer software. At the end of this session, the students will be able to understand and visualize the forward kinematics of various robot configurations and I will be demonstrating you the robot ki for forward kinematics of two DOF configuration. So, what is kinematics? As you can see, this is a link, this is link 1 whose length is denoted by A1, this is link 2 whose length is denoted by A2. These are the joints which connects link. So, this joint connects link 1 to link 2 and this is the base joint. So, as you can see there are two joints and two links and we call as an industrial robot as a series of links and joints. So, there are series of links connected with series of joints and that creates a kinematic chain. Each link connects to adjacent joints and each joint it connects to adjacent links. Now, we have to set up a coordinate frame. What do we will call as a coordinate frame is that we have to create a coordinate frame like this one x, y, z axis for this joint as well as this joint. So, we have to create a coordinate frame for each joint of the robot and we have to find out the relationship between the joints motion that is the joints position and the end effector motion. This is what we call as a end effector denoted by P x and P y. So, this end effector is the last part of our industrial robot which performs the certain tasks. The task may be of gripping or any tool. Now, we are going to start with the forward kinematics. What is forward kinematics is that you have a robotic arm that is inclined like this. I will just draw this ar arm. So, this is presently inclined in a horizontal axis or aligned with a horizontal x axis. Now, you tell the first link that is this link to rotate by a angle of theta 1 and the second link by a angle of theta 2. In forward kinematics what we are required is the joint positions that means the joint angles theta 1 and theta 2 in case of revolute joints. If the joints are revolute we are prescribed with the joint angles. If the joints are prismatic we have to give the or prescribe the displacements. The task is to find out the position P x and P i of the end effector. That means, the position and the orientation that is phi of end effector we are required to find out. This is called as forward kinematics. So, let it be clear that in forward kinematics the joint positions are given and the end effector positions and configurations are required or we are required to calculate. For this we are going to follow a d h parameter approach that I have told you in the previous lecture. So, what is d h parameter approach is first we assign a coordinate frame for each joint that means, we as, uh, denote a coordinate system for each joint like this. Okay. And using d h notations the four d h parameters are a joint offset, the joint angles, then the twist angles and link lengths. These are the four d h parameters. That I have told you. Next, these are the steps first we attach frames to the links. Next, we define the d h parameter or we prepare a d h parameters table. Afterwards, 
we write the homogeneous transformation matrix for each frame i plus 1. So, if there is a uh, joint number 2, then we write the homogeneous transformation matrix for joint number 2 with respect to joint number 1 with this data. This is the transformation matrix. After that, after we have written all the transformation matrix for from starting from joint number 2 to joint number n that is the last joint, we multiply all the transformation matrix in order to get the final homogeneous matrix of the end effect. This is the step by step procedure that we are going to follow. Now, today we will do forward kinematics of a 2 degree of freedom planar joint that we call as 2 R configuration. So, let A 1 and A 2 they represent the link lengths. Next theta 1 and theta 2 they represent the joint angles that means these angles. And for a planar configuration, that means planar configuration is that configuration in which both the links they traverse in a same plane. That means there is a no joint offset and there is no twist angle. So, all for planar configuration, the joint offsets and twist angles both are absent. Now, we will prepare a dh parameter table. So, for joint 1, the dh parameters can be written as as the offsets joint offsets are 0 and twist angles are 0. So, we write these parameters here. So, both the parameters are absent. So, both are 0. For jointed arm type the theta 1 angle is given and theta 2 angle is given. So, both these angles they are variable. Now, I will show you what is meant by variable. Next, the link lengths are already prescribed as A 1 and A 2. So, these are the d h parameter table that we have done for both the joints. Next, we will prepare an HTM that is homogeneous transformation matrix for individual link by using this formula on the right hand side cos theta i minus sin theta i cos alpha i sin theta i sin alpha i a i cos theta i. So, this is the homogeneous transformation matrix for individual link that can be written. So, based on this table that we have uh, written in the previous slide the T 1 that means the homogeneous transformation matrix for first joint can be calculated as C 1 that means cos theta 1 we will write cos theta 1 as C 1 sin theta 1 as S 1 same for cos theta 2 and sin theta 2. So, this T matrix T 1 matrix and T 2 matrix can be written as follows. Next step is multiplying T 1 and T 2 because there are only 2 joints except the base joint there are 2 joints T 1 and T 2. So, we will multiply these 2 matrices. So, T 1 this this and T 2 is this. So, after multiplication I will just show you the first row. So, C 1 we will multiply first row of this matrix and first column of this matrix. So, C 1 into C 2. So, is written here. Next minus S 1 into minus S 2 minus S 1 into S 2 it can be written here S 2. Next 0 into 0 here and A 1 C 1 into 0. So, this is the first element that is available. Similarly, the rest of the elements uh, can be computed as shown in the matrix. So, this C 1 C 2 minus S 1 S 2 that means cos theta 1 into cos theta 2 minus sin theta 1 into minus sin theta 2. So, this is the formula of cos A plus B cos of bracket A plus B. 
that can be written as in short C 1 2, C 1 2 indicates of cos theta 1 plus theta 2, cos of bracket theta 1 plus theta 2. Similarly, minus S 1 2 0 A 1 C 1 plus A 2 C 1 2. So, this is the matrix that we will get by using the multiplication. From this matrix, what we get is the position of the end effector. So, the last two parameters that is a 1 c 1 plus a 2 c 1 2. So, this is the position of end effector in x direction and this is the position of end effector in y direction. Similarly, we will solve a simple problem that is a 1 is equal to 300 mm, a 2 is equal to 400 mm, theta 1 is equal to 30 degree, theta 2 is equal to 60 degree. By putting a 1 c 1 plus a 2 c 1 2. So, we are given c 1 that is theta 1 is given as 30 degree, theta 2 is 60 degree link length 1 is 300 mm that can be converted into meters 0.3 meters and link length 2 is 400 mm that can be converted into meters that is 0.4 mm. So, we can easily put in the formula that is P x is equal to A 1 C 1 plus A 2 C 1 2 that can be computed as 0 0.3 into cos 30 plus 0 0.4 into cos 30 plus 60. So, P x will come as 0 0.2598 meter. Similarly, P y can come as 0 0.55 meter. This is the solution of or the position of the end effector that can be computed. These are, these are the references that I have referred and thank you all.